these are six mods for Forge 1.18.1 that I find helpful. If you want to download them, check the links in the description below. Hi guys, I'm Dianzu, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, subscribe and hit the bell for future content. Anyways, without further ado, let's get on with the show. Minecraft is a game that at times can be quite unforgiving. Horrific death, scams, chest monsters, maddening machinery, and so on and so forth. But with these mods, certain annoying aspects of the game will be made much less so, so let's dive down into it. Within the depths of the overworld, you may encounter goblins, which, while seeming hilariously funny to bully and punt around, which they are, I wouldn't recommend it. For not only will they punch you very lightly, but you're also harming an amazing deal. You see, when interacted with, goblins will offer you a number of trades relating to the earth and various quality utilities. Whether it be insane conversion rates, generous emeralds, or rare goods, goblins will likely have it in store. Interestingly, they also seem to offer over-enchanted tools, like unbreaking four diamond axes, lure five fishing rods, etc, etc. Now, if you decide to dive down into the nether, you may find the vain goblin trader. Thankfully, they don't seem to be obsessed with their appearance. <laughs> huh, when when did I get a laugh track? <clears throat> okay, okay, back, back to script, back to script. And instead, it will offer you OP nether-related trades, like unobtainable OP potions, cheap wart, and similarly generous conversion rates. And instead of offering you high-quality tools, they will offer over-enchanted weapons and armor, perfect for anyone who gets into one too many scuffles in-game. As a side note, if you are a kind soul, you can offer these goblins their favorite food, which they seem to like so much they'll follow you just to get it. Regular goblins like apples, vain ones prefer carrots. Now, if you're like one of my very unfortunate friends, the Void may seem like an unavoidable and inevitable death. Yet, with the Void Totem, crafted from the Totem of Undying, the cold depths of the abyss, endless in their volume and eternal in their status, have been made significantly less dangerous. For when held in the main or offhand, the Void Totem will teleport any player falling into the Void to the last bit of solid ground they stood on. So down with the Water Curtain, and long live the Void Totem. Have you ever noticed that when you're fishing, that every single fish you catch is caught dead, not dying, just dead? Well, here's the thing. Following a series of investigations into the player's strength, I've come to the conclusion that, due to the sheer force used by the player, any fish that has been reeled of the water has had its neck broken, thus dying and being turned into an item. Probably. But that's an aside, this terrible fate for foolish fish can now be avoided with the tactical fishing mod, which now makes it so that if you have a bucket of water in your off end, any fish you reel up will be bucketed. So now, you break the fish's neck, but this time they fall into the bucket and get revived, don't question it. Sorting machines. For redstone illiterate individuals like me, they are a maddening, inexplicable contraption up there with wireless gas, and for the redstone gifted, they can seem a tad bulky at times. Therefore, the Golden Hopper. This little miracle machine can sort out all the items you've ever wanted. Apples, undescribed meat, clown stick, your social security number, Codsworth, and many more. Simply input your desired item into the hopper icon slot and all your sorting worries are sent down the chute. So, you've just finished your base. It's beautiful, and lives up to all you've ever desired in a build. Oh yeah, also, Trogdorf Chiston House is in the middle of it. What you have on your hands is a chest monster. These large, cumbersome, ugly things, while initially quite helpful when first building a base, can become a major pain later on, often growing to such a size that moving them will be a multi-day task. IRL. However, with packing tape, your concerns about storage will be made far less bothersome. For you see, when you shift right click any storage block with packing tape, it will turn into an easily movable item that can be unpacked with a right click. Now, whether you use this for heisting your enemies is something I can't control. You shut the up. While not helpful in the actively making the game easier kind of way, Snuffles did prevent the loss of my sanity in Vorkuta. Therefore, I am forever thankful, and thus, I will categorize them as helpful. In their natural snowy habitats, Snuffles will be frosty, and if sheared, will give the players a block of frosty fur. Snuffles that are bred in warmer biomes or burnt, however, will be frostless, and their snuffle fluff will be different. However, order can be restored by putting them in powder snow, thus returning them to their frosty state. In addition, their fluff can be turned into a nice carpet, softer than yak I'd say, with finer textured fur. Just make sure not to stain it. 
As a side note, since the latest update just dropped about a literal day before this was going to be released, snuffles now have it so that their fur naturally covers their eyes. In addition, you can now cycle through various eye-covering haircuts, which are... The Classic The Idol The Causational Rebel And The Nibbler Now, if you want to see your snuffles' eyes from under the fluff, you need to shear them. The show's gotta come to an end, and I still need to get that laugh track issue solved, but if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. This is your host, Dionsu.